हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर अमिताभ विश्वास आई एम वर्किंग एज अ असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन डिवीजन ऑफ फॉरेंसिक साइंस गलगोटियाज यूनिवर्सिटी नाउ फॉर टूडे मॉड्यूल वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द मोस्ट इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक ऑफ द फॉरेंसिक डॉक्यूमेंट एग्जामिनेशन इज द फॉर्जरी इन द डॉक्यूमेंट्स now as we know that every individual at one time or another was asked to sign a document rather than merely putting a fingerprint to the paper as a method of identification but why signature had replaced the finger fingerprints overall now it would be simple to just a place a fingerprint on a check instead a pair's signature it may also prevent forgery yes or no the answer behind the use of signature is that it is easier to read is illogical as lots of signature have evolved until they are symbolic installation of ancient handwriting and are now illegible so what is the basic answer behind why we have using signature instead of fingerprints so the correct answer for this question lies in the word intent now by signing a document the signatory are entailing intent on his or her part to consent with the consequences provided by that check postscript agreement contract etc one could intentionally or easily put fingerprint of somebody recently dead or unconscious upon a document if fingerprint was the only required for the authentication this does not assume though that the placing an inked thumbprint next to the pair's signature on the check about to be consulted at the check cashing counter in the bank would not be help out the fingerprints universal implication would certainly at the very least and be prevention to the individuals intent upon the forge, passing a forged instrument now with the use of signature and handwriting widely in authentication of documents handwriting and signature are prone to be forged now we have heard over the years in recent times also there are many cases of forgery in banks especially in the checks and in wills in contracts so we need to be focus in this area over the years many ways of forgery had been employed to defy the concerned person by the forger signature are very common means of authentication in terms of banks transactions checks are when vulnerable to be forged by the imitating or copying signature of the victims now these forgery are needed to be addressed and what are the ways to identify these forgery need to be discussed so we now we have understood why we need to study the forgery in the documents how it is important now from this module what we are going to learn what are the learning outcome of this module now we are going to learn several points which are mentioned as first we will understand how forgery is defined in the documents and learn what are the different types of forgeries which can be classified as per their ex executions we will learn about the different characteristics of the forged signature or handwriting which identify the forged document and also the examination of these forged document on the basis of qualification and expertise now let us discuss our topic for this module what do we understand with the term forgery when the documents are called forged or fake or fraud 
in the law of forgery. To understand forgery, we should well verse with the definition of the forgery of the document in the legal term. Forgery in a stringent way is a legal term and is used as a result should most likely be avoided by the question document examiner. There have been proposed four characteristics for making a false document which need an attention. Making a false document first is by signing a fictitious name. Second, passing off an otherwise true document by false representation, dehorse the instruments. Third, signing one's own name. Fourth, writing a false address or description to a true signatures. So these are the four conditions which makes a false documents. Now legally, forgery is well defined in our criminal justice system. An underlying intent to defraud based on the knowledge of false nature of the instrument must accompany the act. Forgery is defined in our Indian Penal Code IPC under section 464 which states that making a false document is a person is said to make a false document or false electronic record first who dishonestly or fraudulently makes signs, seals or execute a document or part of the document. Second, makes or transmit any electronic record or part of any electronic record. For third, affixes any electronic signature or electronic record. Fourth, makes any mark denoting the execution of document or the authenticity of the electronic signature. The composition of forgery are making false document liability to the legal system. Forger identification and defraud intention. An apt fraud requires superior to anything normal dexterity and a lot of practice. Creative ability helps as well. Now penmanship or handwriting is an exceedingly complex neuromuscular action that requires coordination between hands, arms and fingers and also eyes. When realistic development has been come to an end of the day, once a kid has figured out how to compose or compose writing, composing turn into a characteristic demonstration obtained after some time. It is no more important to stop and consider every stroke and how to take care of the business. Unless there is a physiological or psychological problem, genuine handwriting is usually smooth, spontaneous and free flowing with less focus on the movement and more on the content. So the counterfeiter then again is compelled to keep up steady control over the pen, focusing eagerly on every movement point of interest. Now to understand the forgery and the forger characteristics, we need to know what are the different types of forgeries in question documents. Now we, we can understand what are the different kinds of forgery in the documents by relating to what is a based on the execution. First is way is simulation. With regards to falsification, one size does not fit all. There are different types of most common type is the simulation. Simulation is the type of forgery that involves the suspect or the criminal or the perpetrator use the model of the victim's handwriting. 
the falsifier deliberately watches the genuine and after that makes duplicates of the individual's mark to work on the imitating it. The falsifier or the perpetrator pays considerate on the way the capital letters look on the drawing instead of composing the signature. So the counterfeiter, counterfeiter endeavors to duplicate the pictorial attribute the way it looks, not on the composition, with the specific end goal to make it as near the bona fide signature as could be. Under the various circumstances, the uh, forger used various techniques or various scientific tools to forge the documents, forge the signature or handwriting. So various techniques are accessible for the counterfeiter as well to use and develop the signature of that of genuine. That may appear to lay person as a real, but it has many characteristics which can be identified only by the handwriting expert. So doing so, many may look forged signature alike as original, but the basic characteristics of the signature or handwriting which makes it genuine could be simulated that where expert compare and identify the similarities and the dissimilarities in the suspected and the genuine signature which are provided at the time of examination. So in the next type of forgery we are going to look is the tracing, tracing forgery. Now tracing is very crude method of forging the signature and it is the one of the method used in the uh, when the uh, carbon papers are developed. At the end of the day, the counterfeiter has the model of the honest to goodness genuine signature. Tracing forgery is classified on the basis of method of the execution. So first is direct tracing which is a method where the forger uses direct original to trace in the signature in the forged document without using any aid. Whereas when a transmitted light is used underneath the document for the tracing are classified under the transmitted forgery. Another way is to use the carbon paper. Now carbon print is taken on the forged document from the original and carbon is covered up by the ink using the pen. So this type of forgery is known as carbon tracing forgery. Now by using the tracing paper or a butter paper on the original signature are traced by the indentation and then writing it with an ink pen to cover the indented part made to document original. Now these are the classification of the tracing forgery provided the execution style which is necessary to understand the nature of forgery. Knowledge of these methods of forgery is very important to identify these forgeries. Now, Trace forgery display the set of lines which are present underneath the signature which we need to be detected. These lines, lines must be indentation or carbon outlines and the ink strokes will be discovered holding fast to the rules. The prominent feature of all trace forgery is the lack of natural variation. The size of the signatures remains the same as where it has been traced from the genuine signature. Whereas genuine signature vary in size and shapes every time as a part of natural variation. So under the process of act, numerous begins and stops will be there in the counterfeiter's signatures as he checks his ground curled, called resting dot which are promptly seen. So trace forgery are easy to detect by the expert. This is a one of the crudest method of the forgery. Next we are going to discuss is cut and paste forgery. The cut and paste forgery is closely 
as the term suggests. A real signature is cut from one report and set on the spurious record, then photocopied. In this event of forgery that the lightning and determination is legitimately balanced. The record will seem genuine to layman, but it can be detected easily by the handwriting expert. Since one of the principles on which handwriting examination relies is that it is difficult to compose a signature 100% the same way twice. The simplest approach to demonstrate a cut and paste forgery is to find the report from which it has been copied. They will be indistinguishable or to be great degree close if counterfeiter is sufficiently or judicially to change some minor points of interest for examine the last strokes. So, the size and shape of the copy paste forgery will be same which is the one indication that it has been forged. Indicement depends upon the law of implementation, criminologist capacity to locate the original signed document from where it had been copied and to analyze the suspects handwriting or signatures on the false to that of the first. Since no two parts of the handwriting are indistinguishable, the counterfeiter abandons himself open to conviction by overlooking a couple of minor points of interest. For example, the way his casualty works out here number. Now this is cut and paste forgery. Next type of forgery is very uh, new to this modern world is electronic forgery. Electronic forgery is also closely related to cut and paste forgery, but in this advanced computer era, the scan and drop strategy has developed. The personal computer gives the counterfeiter a strong weapon. The falsifier basically digitizes a genuine signature by high resolution scanning uh, devices, then embeds into the spurious archives and prints it. Under the magnifying lens, in any case, the pixelation uncovers that it has been digitized. So, the electronic signature are nowadays very common and should be encountered easily. Next is freehand forgery. This is another kind of fabrication or forgery where the falsifier essentially composes the another's name without making any effort to duplicate. He basically signs a structure in his own particular writing. Now and again picking wordings or stating of his own. The fraud and forgery division of the forensic science lab is said to have many illustrations where the forger have kept in touch with some made up expression, camouflaged as a signature. As per the pioneer expert, this is the most effortless kind of signature forgery in attempt. It will diminish his odds of arrangement since it is more troublesome for analysts to pursue the two handwriting test with the specific and goal to make a positive correlation. Now we know what are the different types of forgery. Now we will try to understand what are the general indication given by the non-genuineness signature or handwriting which we may include to detect the forgery. The first and foremost is blunt beginnings and endings. The forger puts the pen point in contact with the paper and afterward begin composing. When he is doing so with the name or some bit of therefore, he stops the pen and lifts it from the surface. This may bring about an underscored blunt start 
or completion where the pen was set in the contact with the surface. In a figure we have shown the general characteristics of the non-genuine signature. There might be pointless and in incidental imprints brought on by the pen begins and stop. The author may choose subsequent to put his pen in contact with the paper. That is, it is in the wrong spot, lifts up and moves it again to a position considered more right. Regularly a mark of begin and stop are great deal more dynamic. So with the blunt ending, beginning and in between pauses makes this more as a forged signature or forged writing as compared to original where there is very smooth ending and smooth finishing. Second is the unnatural pen lifts and unnatural, unusual hesitations. Sometimes where the pen stops in an uncommon point in a composition of matter, maybe where a radical alter in the course is going to happen or another later development going to begin, this may look like a presence of little gap in the composed line where one is not expected or covering of the two ink lines where there ought to be one and only consistent line. So the pen lifts and the hesitation point out the signature of the forgery in the documents. So this should be carefully noted that if there is an unusual lift in the signature. Next uh, indication is forger's tremor. Now tremor may occur in the writing or signature due to old age or some illness or poor skill in writing. It may look similar to the forgery either by tracing or simulated. Since the formation of the most types of the fake signature is more similar to the drawings, the pen moves so gradually that little now and then microscopic variation in the course occur in what ought to be a liquid looking line. The resultant line is not smooth but rather look like a shaking pen. For the identifying forger's tremor, two ways are basically employed. First is the elimination, means elimination of any other doubts by analyzing the sample from the original writer or any admitted writing during that time of forgery, means we need to eliminate that the genuine signature or the writer whose signature is genuine, there is a tremor or not due to old age or any other factors. Second is establishing the technique used for the forgery. We need to establish which kind of forgery they have used is either by tracing, simulation, freehand or anything. The next indication is the speed and the pressure. Ordinary handwriting or genuine handwriting or signature is uninhibitedly and quickly executed and in this way typically described particularly when a nib pen is utilized by light and the hairline upstroke and shaded or substantial downstroke are seen. Although ballpoint pens or felt tip pens have a tendency to minimize this difference between the strokes it is still big element in the composing. Again in the forged writing in light of the fact that the pen is moving gradually instead of with the dynamic movement connected with the most authentic composition, the ink line stays steady in the thickness because of the same consistent pressure applied to the gradually moving pen. So there will be a less assuming any decreasing of inner lines. So by checking the speed and the pressure applied, the lines uh, width is decreasing or increasing. So we can check the speed and pressure as well. 
next indication is patching occasionally however at some same time at some time uh, most of us have made a mistake while composing our own writing or signature a few people may allow the signature to sign unbothered thinking minimal about the oversight as or a flow while other will essentially alter the signature by adjusting the culpable part now this might be done keeping in mind the end goal to make signature more discernible or in the light of the fact that an imperfection in the pen or paper has influenced what we see in the our ordinary signature or for some other reasons that may even in the intuitive these fixes are generally patent with no attempt made with respect to the author to marks the generally cover the remedy means this patching should be not be usually done in original signature if you are using or you are seeing the patching in the signature it can be found as a indication of the forgery next is a carbon outline and indentation this characteristics is specific to the tracing method as showed before in previous module trace signature may hold evidence of their techniques for the generation for example carbon or graphite follows or outlines indentation forger try to eradicate carbon paper or graphite imprints may yet leave hints of those substances if not confirmation of the deletion itself might be distinguished by the different means as well demonstration of the erasing may harm or dull the signature or other trace composing and this might be seen by the microscopic examination so to conclude i summarize the this module that forgery document common now are days signature and handwriting forgery are need to be tackled in more technical and scientific ways any deliberate attempt to alter or modify documents by adding or editing the marks symbol or any other written material is termed as forgery forgery is categorized in different ways on the basis of their method used for the execution from the crude to technical forgery are considered for the examination by the document forensic examiners tracing and simulation are the common types of uh, forgery which are used and identified in major cases and examined there are well known characteristics of this forgery which we need to be found in the forged case these features are non this feature of non genuineness should be analyzed by the document specialist or the forensic document examiner to address the problem slow speed blunt start and stop unusual tremors if uh, unevenness in the pressure carbon outlines or indentation in terms of tracing forgery are the sum of the major identification feature for the for signature or handwritings now for identification of these forgeries it uh, document expert are needed and the document expert should be specialist and known with the facts that and procedures to conduct the examination now forensic document examiner had gained their knowledge and expertise through the proper channel and license to practice all the things so for this module i am concluding it for other uh, video tutorials you may visit the epg patshala websites thank you